The Hong Kong-based new mobile may be one of the younger smartphone brands, but that hasn't stopped them from releasing a few affordable offerings. With a 4G LTE-equipped US model, the Z8 is the company's latest attempt to deliver an affordable mid-range smartphone. This is Bailey Stein with Android Authority, and this is my full review of the new mobile Z8. When it comes to design, the Z8 offers a somewhat standard looking body. The glossy plastic rear cover has a faux metallic look and tapers off at the edges to provide a comfortable feel in the hand. It does resist fingerprints very well, although it is a bit difficult to remove. While removing it will grant you access to a microSD card slot, two SIM card slots, and a user replaceable battery, actually getting the cover off can prove to be a challenge. The side power and volume buttons do provide a good amount of tactile feedback, but I do wish that the power button was positioned slightly lower along the right side of the phone. Although it is on the slightly thicker side at 9.4mm, the phone still feels very nice in the hand. It also weighs an average 146 grams. In addition to the silver plastic band running along the sides of the Z8, there's also a plastic chin on the front of the device. Instead of using a traditional notification LED, New Bubble has actually integrated a light directly into the plastic chin. It's a very unique addition, and the breathing effect is undeniably pretty sweet. The three capacitive keys on the bottom are illuminated, but some users may be disappointed by the non-standard layout. There's also an 8 megapixel wide-angle front-facing camera to the left of the earpiece. The Z8's 5.5-inch 1080p gapless IPS display looks excellent with great viewing angles. Unfortunately, the maximum brightness is still relatively dim, which causes poor sunlight readability. My unit did arrive with an LCD bright spot out of the box, and while New Mobile confirmed that this would be covered under their standard 2-year warranty, it does raise some concerns. In addition to those drawbacks, I also found that it easily collected fingerprints, which may annoy some users. Thankfully, New Mobile will be releasing a tempered glass screen protector within the next few weeks, which will hopefully make this less of an issue. Featuring the OctaCore 64-bit MediaTek MT6752 processor clocked at 1.7GHz, the new Mobile Z8 is a solid performer. The benchmark scores closely follow the ASUS Zenfone 2, and day-to-day -day performance was very good during my testing. It just feels as fast as the Zenfone 2, and the stock Android software experience makes the overall experience buttery smooth. There is 2GB of RAM, which should be enough for most users. Coupled with the Mali T760 GPU, the Z8 is able to play most games without any issues. The new mobile Z8 supports 802.11ac Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth 4.0. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi signal wasn't as strong as I would have liked. In addition to sometimes dropping the Wi-Fi connection completely, the Z8 speeds were slightly slower than they were on comparable devices. It might not be an issue for some users who have smaller homes and or stronger Wi-Fi routers, but I do feel that it is worth mentioning. The GPS signal also struggled to lock indoors and did sometimes take a moment to obtain a GPS lock while outdoors. Once it obtained a lock, however, I didn't have any issues. Luckily, it does fully support HSPA Plus on AT&T and T-Mobile with 850, 1900, and AWS 1700, 2100 band support. Although it does include support for dual SIM 4G LTE bands 2, 4, 7, and 17, it is missing band 5 for AT&T and band 12 for T-Mobile out of the box. New Mobile has assured me that they are working with T-Mobile to add band 12 via an over-the-air update, which should be ready very soon. The phone should work in the majority of coverage areas, but I was actually unable to receive 4G LTE on the AT&T network in some areas because of the missing band 5. The rear speaker on the new mobile Z8 is very loud, although it does sound a tad distorted. The 2650mAh user replaceable battery sadly provides disappointing battery life. New Mobile released a firmware update to address this shortly after my first day of testing, which started at 7.30am and ended at 3pm with 2.5 hours of screen on time. After the update, I was able to get the phone to last until about 5pm with 3.5 hours of screen on time. It's an improvement, but I still don't think it's going to be enough to last through a full day of use for the average Android enthusiast. The 13 megapixel Sony rear camera on the Z8 produced a good amount of nice looking images. 
Autofocus can be a bit slow, but it does capture images fairly quickly. There can be a lack of saturation in some images, but that's mostly noticeable when comparing the images with the Zenfone 2, which tends to actually oversaturate. It also has some exposure issues where if you tap on a light object, the exposure drops significantly, or vice versa. All of the images I took, however, were very sharp and detailed. Low light performance is where the phone really struggles though, even with the flash on. Just to give you an idea, here's the same shot with the Zenfone 2 with flash on. And here's the image with the Z8 with flash off. And the Zenfone 2 with flash off. Once again, New Mobile confirmed that they will try their best to improve image processing through future firmware updates. The camera app is just the open source MediaTek app, so there's really nothing different from other MediaTek devices. There are a few modes as well as settings to adjust things like white balance and ISO. Running a near stock Android 5.0 Lollipop out of the box, the Z8 provides an excellent software experience. New has added a few gestures as well as a clear all apps button in the multitasking view, but has otherwise left the software completely stock. The launcher is very similar to the Google Now launcher, except without Google, and the Google keyboard is default out of the box. There's absolutely no bloatware, which is quite frankly refreshing. It does have double tap to wake, draw O for camera, shake for flashlight, similar to Motorola's chop for flashlight, flip to mute, and wave to mute. All work very well, but shake for flashlight is currently limited to just the lock screen. New Mobile will expand this, however, with a software update coming within the next few weeks. Speaking of updates, New Mobile has also promised an Android 5.1 update. Although there is still some uncertainty regarding an Android M update, the company's current software efforts are an early indicator that an update may be likely. The new Mobile Z8 is available officially through New Mobile's website as well as various resellers, including Amazon, Best Buy, Target, and HSN. You can pick up the 32GB variant for $299 in either black or white now, or wait for the 16GB black variant. The 16GB variant will be available in early August through New Mobile's website for $249. You can always expand the storage with a microSD card as well, up to 64GB. The new Mobile Z8 is a very solid offering from a company relatively new to the US market. While its positives include an excellent display quality, great performance, and a stock Android experience, there are a few notable drawbacks. The Wi-Fi signal could be stronger, the audio output does sound a bit distorted, and the battery life is very poor. Unlike other smaller smartphone producers within the US, it seems that New Mobile is very dedicated to improving the device further with software updates and after-sales support. On the other hand, with today's growingly competitive market, it's still difficult to recommend this device. That's especially the case if you're a moderate to heavy user and need your phone to last through a full day of use. All in all, the Z8 is a very laudable first attempt, and I look forward to seeing how much New Mobile will evolve their products over time. Thank you for watching this video, and please make sure to give it a thumbs up below if you enjoyed it. Also, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content, and feel free to leave a comment below. Finally, be sure to visit the Android Authority website for additional coverage, as we are your source for all things Android.